Apollo Ballers is Preacher. We're looking at some shadow action. Yeah, baby. We're getting dark and deep on that priest. Shadow performing kind of great in some situations. Kind of bad in others. But that's okay. We don't mind. We're going to check it out. I kind of gave uh, Shadow a bad rap, I would like to say, on the beta. Uh, there was a lot of procs going on. A lot of randomness. I was like, ah, oh, this randomness is just too damn much, son. It's too damn high. Uh, but I've been playing it again today, and quite frankly, I quite enjoyed it uh, a little bit. And it actually works out better overall, so I'm not going to give it too hard a time. Let's jump into some uh, shadowy goodness. We're going to go through your talents, we're going to go through your rotation, we're going to go through your reforging, your gemming. Then we're going to jump in a five-man, uh, and then demonstrate all that stuff working together. Shadow Priests have undergo undergone quite a few changes since Cataclysm, so let's take our time, let's get through it, and then you can understand your class and how to be an absolute gangster on it as well. So we still get our dot, which is Shadow of Pain. Pain, 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 pain. Shadow of Pain is really, really painful now. Very, very painful. Uh, we can't refresh it anymore with our Mind Flay, so we're going to be keeping track on Shadow of Pain these days. We still get our Mind Flay, which is our balls-to-the-wall filler spell. When we've got nothing else to cast, we stick out our Mind Flay and get some extra damage going on there. We get Mind Blast. Now, Mind Blast, which was traditionally our big nuke, Mind Blast! Badoosh. See, it hits for about 45k for me. Uh, Mind Blast now generates one Shadow Orb. So we're going to get to Shadow Orb shortly. We get Vampiric Touch now. Vampiric Touch um, doesn't do anywhere near as much damage as it used to. Which is fine, but it definitely returns a lot of mana. It's still a powerful dot. We're going to want to keep it up. We're not saying it's super weak. Oh, forget about Sh Vampiric Touch. We're not saying that at all. Uh, just be aware that when we start doing some AoE, we're going to be thinking about dropping Vampiric Touch in favor of other spells. Devouring Plague. Now, Devouring Plague is our super nuke. So I'm going to, while I'm talking, build up a couple of Shadow Orbs. Devouring Plague consumes all the caster's shadow orbs. Now remember they're generated by Mind Blast, okay? Mind Blast is how you generate them. You can also generate them from Shadow of Death, but we'll get there shortly. Uh, shadow Drowning Plague is where you want to blow cooldowns, because this thing hurts. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oosh! Look at that, 54k, 10k, 10k, it just hurts. It hurts a lot, and it ticks extremely quickly. It hurts a lot. That Shad one Devouring Plague there just did 153k damage without me doing anything else to the target. It really, really hurts. So one of the main aims we're going for with the Shadow Priest is to build up as many Shadow Orbs as possible in order to generate as many Devouring Plagues as possible. That's going to be the real key to getting excellent DPS. Shadow Orbs, of course, is what we just spoke about. Generated with Mind Blast, Shadow of Death, and it's used to cast Devouring Plague and empower our Psychic Horror. Uh, for those of you who are more PvP orientated, you'll know all about Psychic Horror. Talents. What talents are we picking? What is best? What is worst? Well, of course, in Mr. Pandaria, we can't really roll that way. It depends on the situation. So we'll talk about it. Psyfiend, Void Tendrils, Dominate Mind, all some kinds of CC. So we get Mind Control. She's always pretty cool. Cyphine, which stands in place and fears enemies. And we get Void Tendrils, which uh, shoot out the ground, rooting up to five enemy targets. Some bosses need things rooted. Some bosses need things feared. Always up to you. Pack your Tome of the Clear Minds. It's entirely up to you. None of these are a DPS increase by any means. Level 30, the talent choices are something that increases our movement speed. Now, we have a glyph. I'm just going to talk about this quickly, and I'm going to come back to this glyph, which is Glyph of the Mind Flay. Your Mind Flay spell no longer slows your victim's movement speed. Instead, each time Mind Flay deals damage, you will be granted 15% increased movement speed for 5 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. That means that we have a real personal speed boost that is essentially on all the time. It's not going to be many times that thing is going to drop off. It really isn't. In which case, you tend to lean away from body and soul, which is when we're casting Powered Shield on ourselves. Remember, we're talking about personal, selfish-ass DPS here. Uh, we want our DPS to be as max as possible, which means we want our movement speed to be our movement to be as little as possible. Body and Soul, not as useful now with our Glyph of Mind Flay, which means we're generally looking to maybe help the ballers out. Oh, we need to move soon. Let's get ready for it. Angelic Feather is something that you need to master and get used to because, well, ultimately... Oh, look, it looks like a little pancake. Uh, Angelic Feathers are awesome. You can place them wherever you want, and oh, you move over it, and then you move like an absolute gangster. You rock it and roll in. Plus, you look sparkly and cute, which is always a bonus. I really recommend Allergelic Feather. I think it's something you should pick and start getting used to using. Uh, it's something that needs a little bit of practice to get the best out of it, but when you do, you will really see the ultimate benefits. It's really, really cool. It's really nice, and it recharges. You get a stack of three. You can spam three down, and then you'll start regenerating them. Pretty cool. Now, level 45, you get some sort of DPS increase, 
proc, essentially, uh, with, with various other ways of doing it. Let's talk about Power Word Solace. You strike the enemy with Power of the Heavens, <laughs> which always sounds awesome, dealing holy damage and restoring maximum mana. While in Shadow Form, this transforms into Shadow Word Insanity. Consumes your Shadow Word Pain to deal 56,000 Shadow Damage to the target, only usable while in Shadow Word Pain has less than 5 seconds remaining. It gives you something else to track. It's not bad. It's not bad, but the others are performing better. So you've got Mindbender as well. Uh, improves your Shadow Fiend. Gives it a 1 minute cooldown, and it does substantially more effective at dealing damage and generating mana. So very nice for short burst cooldown fights, where it's like, oh my god, every minute or so, we need to burn this gangster to the floor. We absolutely need to smash him to pieces. We need to get all Hulk Hogan all over this guy. Uh, so that is a very cool little spell for that. Overall, DPS is generally going to be increased by From Darkness Comes Light. When we get the Surge of Darkness. Periodic damage from your Vampiric Touch. Remember, this comes from your Vampiric Touch, not Shadow of Pain. Uh, gives you a 15% chance to cause your next Mind Spike to not consume damage over time effects. I become instant cast and cost no mana. So let me just fire off a couple of spells here. Let me get that Vampiric Touch up. So I've got two dots ticking. Now, hopefully this thing is going to proc for me. Come on, baby. 15% chance. You never know. You never know. With a 15% chance, God knows. There we go. Okay, so that's your proc there. And then you fire off my spike. You can see none of my dots wore off. It procs again. Cool as anything. And they're hitting for 60k. As you see, it procs pretty regularly. Even at 50% chance, it procs pretty regularly. Uh, and that's going to work in real nice synergy with something we're going to talk about later on. So bear that in mind. From Darkness Come Light should be, at the moment, your... Uh, main go-to spell, unless you need Mega Burst on demand in which Mindbender should win. Your next tier is some sort of survival talent. You get special guys, your shadow blurs into darkness, leaving your true form behind. As a shadow, you are stealthed. Not great to go into stealth while you're doing mass DPS, let's be honest. Desperate Prayer instantly heals you for 30% of the total health, which is always cool just to get a mega heal. People who are DPSing as Shadow Priest tend to roll with Angelic Bulwark. Anytime a damaging attack brings you below 30% health, you gain an absorption shield equal to 20% of your total health. It's for when crap happens. Suddenly the boss turns around and smashes us and we're really in a scary situation. We need that extra second to fire off our fade or whatever it might be. Angelic Bulwark is there to save your ass and it's passive. It's passive. It occurs every uh, 90 seconds. It's cool, guys. I really like this from a DPS perspective while I'm focused on my damage. Should things go wrong, Angelic Bulwark should save me or at least give me a good chance. Your next one is another DPS cooldown of choice. Or you can have the passive effect. So let's talk about Divine Insight. Uh, periodic damage from your Shadow Word Pain has a 5% chance to reset the cooldown on Mind Blast and cause your next Mind Blast within 12 seconds to be instant cast and cost no mana. Now that seems on the face of it super awesome, doesn't it? Because we're getting more Mind Blast, we're getting more Shadow Orbs, we're getting more Devouring Plagues. Now, because of the way this works with From Darkness Comes Light, it can be a little conflicting and I'll talk about that soon. Power Infusion uh, is basically a, a haste increase. It does reduce mana cost, but... Uh, the fact is the mana cost isn't important to us as a Shadow Priest. Uh, reducing mana cost isn't amazing for us. Uh, what it does is increase our spell casting speed by 20%, which is really cool. Again, on a two-minute cooldown, mixing that with Mindbender, you're going to get some serious on-demand burst whenever you need it. Twist of Fate is generally better. After damaging or healing a target below 20% health, you deal 15% increased damage and healing for 10 seconds. Now, it's easy to say Divine Insight for your Heroics is probably better because we'd you know, we're not often keeping mobs alive long enough in that below execute phase in order to get the most out of it. But when you're raiding, Twist of Fate is going to come in really nice. 15% increased damage on bosses where they're always above, uh, they're always below 15% health for an extended period of time is going to grant you that uber bonus. It really is. So it's all judgment causes. You've got Burst, Power Infusion, Twist of Fate. Overall, if you're doing a nice, big, healthy raid boss, is going to be nicer. Divine Insight, is, Divine Insight is pretty nice while you're rolling in your heroics, getting your instant mind blast and stuff like that. Level 90... Level 90 is not great for the Shadow Priest. Uh, it depends on what mobs are doing. I could read all this text to you. Ultimately, they're all dependent on where bosses are or where mobs are. There's some sort of AoE spell. So you've got a Holy Bolt that travels and grows in power as it travels, hitting everything in its path. The effect can bounce from enemies to enemies. It's pretty cool. It looks awesome. Divine Star, again. Uh, instant, it's a 15 second cooldown. Fires a Divine Star in front of you, traveling and causing damage in front of enemies in its path again. When it reaches a destination, it also deals damage to all targets in its path. It's pretty cool, again. Halo tends to be more uh, fire and forget, and tends to be more useful, I would say. And plus, it looks awesome. 
However, it's literally going to come down to what am I doing? Where are these mobs? Are they all spread out? Halo's probably going to win. Are they kind of gathered? Divine Star's going to win. Is there a bit of bouncing? Are they close but not all together? Then maybe Cascade's going to win. Ultimately, it's your choice. What are the mobs doing? What is better? I'd like to roll with Halo. It looks awesome. It looks really, really cool. It does what it says on the tin. And when I'm doing AoE in my five mans and stuff, it just comes out nicely. And if I'm hitting multiple bosses or whatever, it all works out pretty, pretty cool. So I like that. Let's talk about Glyphs. Shadow got some really, really nice Glyphs as well, which I was pretty happy about. Glyph of Mindfly, we've already spoke about, okay? You get this movement speed increase. I really recommend it. Movement speed is always good. Now, Glyph of Mind Spike. We were talking about this earlier. When you deal damage with your Mind Spike, the cast time of your next Mind Blast is reduced by 50%, lasting 6 seconds. This effect can stack twice. So now you can see a synergy from, from, when, from Darkness Comes Light, reducing the cooldown now of our Mind Blast, giving us instant cast Mind Blast, allowing us to get back to normal DPS and building super fast Shadow Orbs. This can cause some confliction with Divine Insight. Because you fire off a mind blast and then it's instantly reset and then suddenly you'll have this divine insight proc And you can't fire it off because you've just used the cooldown elsewhere It's very very tricky So that's why I prefer not rolling with divine insight overall with if I'm using the glyph of mind spike and from darkness comes light the Glyph of Dark Binding is also pretty much a must for any healer, five mans, raids, or whatever. You can now cast Prayer of Mending, Renew, and Leap of Faith without cancelling Shadow Farm. Sometimes we need to do these things, especially our uh, Prayer of Mending. We need to fire that bad boy off. We don't want to be losing DPS and then getting back into Shadow Farm. Leap of Faith is something we use all the time in raids, so we want to be making best use of it and without suffering DPS too damn much. We used a global on the Leap of Faith. We probably had some move to get there. I just want to continue my DPS now. So really, really nice combination of glyphs there. Something I really recommend. A quick note to Glyph of Dispersion, which reduces the cooldown. If you're doing some uh, nice big dispersions and you need them regularly, note that you can get that back down to a cooldown. You can reduce that cooldown down by 15 seconds. Nice big shout out to that. Uh, your fade also reduces all damage taken by 10%. Is the other one I want you to take note of. Are we regularly soaking some big heavy damage? Fade, such a nice spell. Fire off the fade there. Very low cooldown. 10% damage reduction from fade as well. So be aware of what your situation is. Again, pack your tomes. Swap out whatever you need to do. Let's talk about our reforging. Come to daddy. There we go. Okay, with Reforging on a Shadow Priest, it's pretty damn easy, all right? Uh, you're going to have a, a little bit of an enjoying time here. Uh, I'm going to put some values in the back that you guys should check out. What we're aiming for, first of all, is our hit cap. We want to be hit capped. We want to make sure our spells hit. You can see you want 15%. So you can see 15.01% there. Zero missed chance. Every time I fire a spell, a missed Mind Blast is a missed Shadow Orb, which is a huge amount of fail. You don't want that. Get your hit cap. It's important, guys. Really important. After that, we want to get the haste. Our haste soft caps. Okay, and what are soft caps? I'm going to put some values in the back. These are when we are generating extra ticks of dots. An extra tick of Shadow Word Pain. An extra tick of Vampiric Touch. And so on and so forth. Those actually add up to a massive amount of DPS. Now, we're going to aim for the soft cap first while your gear is relatively low. While you're in low gear, you just want to get the soft cap. That's it. After that, you want to build your critical strike chance as much as possible. You want to get as much crit as you can uh, and get that crit up and get it nice and tidy. And then after crit, you then start working towards the next haste cap. So you're going to have this point on your Shadow Priest where you're like, I have really good gear now. Can I reach the next haste cap? If you can, you're then going to reforge all the way back to haste. So you're going to have this period where you go haste to soft cap, which is pretty easy to do. Then you're stacking crit. Then your gear gets good enough where you can say, hmm, I think I can reach the next haste cap. Let's drop all that crit, crit, get all that haste back up again, and then we'll start going for crit. Mastery is the disease of the Shadow Priest right now. Mastery is absolutely terrible. Crit and haste are always better than mastery. Mastery is absolute garbage. Get rid of it as much as you possibly can. Get rid of your mastery. Your mastery is terrible compared to the other stats. It's really, really bad. For your Gemmy, you're going to aim for as much intellect as possible. And then judging on what your set bonuses are, will you get good intellect, good crit? Check it out, guys, okay? If you do, it's worth picking up your set bonuses. In general, you're going to be gemming for as much intellect as you possibly can. And using the Meta Gem, increasing your intellect and your 3% increased critical, critical strike effect, which is your burning primal diamond. Those are going to be simple gemming choices. Pretty easy, nothing to worry about. Let's talk about rotation. Single target is pretty cool. Just make sure you get your opener right. We are after Shadow Orbs. Simplify your goals. We want Shadow Orbs. Shadow Orbs lead to more Devouring Plague, which means to absolutely gangs the DPS, okay? So first things first is get that Mind Blast on cooldown. Get your first Shadow Orb. 
Get your Shadow of Pain on. Get your Vampiric Touch up. And in between there now, we're going to start filling in with Mind Flay. Very simple. And we're tracking this Mind Blast. We want to use as many Mind Blasts as possible. Now, you're going to start getting, probably soon enough, your From Darkness Comes Light procs. Which means, ah, I need to cast Mind Spike immediately. You don't. It stacks twice. So, you don't need to panic about this. Get that Mind Blast on cooldown. Boom. Three Shadow Orbs. Devouring Plague on, start doing super gangster DPS, okay? And then that's it, we're working back towards it. So when you get this proc, remember it stacks twice. You don't need to start cancelling and cutting spells off just for a single from Darkness Comes Light proc. It's not worthwhile. It really is not worthwhile. Save them, be a bit smart about it. Don't panic like, oh my god, I've got a proc. It stacks twice, you're fine. See, I've got another proc there. I'm going to wait till that finishes. Then I'm going to fire off my Mind Spike. Keep my dots on. It's relaxing. It looks uh, kind of annoying because there's so many procs going on. But that's okay because you can manage them quite nicely. And there we go. Another proc. Oh, Mind Spike. Then into the, uh, the Mind Blast, which is increased in speed. So you need to also be aware. Look at the speed I've got from that Glyph of Mind Flay. So cool. Uh, what else you need to be aware of is that two Mind Spikes means your next Mind Blast is instant cast. So if you're in a situation where you've had a From Darkness Comes Light proc... You've already used two Mind Spikes, so your next Mind Blast is instant cast. You want to save that proc until you can you cast that next Mind Blast. Likely, it's going to be very soon. Of course, you don't want to waste a proc by any means, but just start using a little bit of that brain power. Should I be doing this? Should I be doing something else? Multi-dotting. If you're up to about four mobs, it's certainly worth firing off your Vampiric Touches, your Shadow of Pains, and still keeping Mind Blast on cooldown. Devouring Plague is the awesome sauce. So you want to get your dots ticking and ticking. You're going to get a lot of Mind Spike procs from your Shadow, uh, your Vampiric Touch. Still keep your Mind Blast on cooldown. And then just fire off them Devouring Plagues. Keep it rocking and rolling. With all these Vampiric Touches going on, you're going to start getting a lot. As you can see how many Mind Spike procs I get. You see another one again. And they hit for about 104k. I'm getting double procs now. All working out really well. Still keep your Mind Blast on cooldown. And that's essentially going to be your AoE rotation. It's moving in and weaving these spells together in a really nice manner. Coming back here. Oh, Mind Blast is ready again. And doing this. As soon as it... But that's about all you can manage. You can see the dots are falling off and ticking there. I will literally be cycling through these four mobs. Using these procs effectively. Look at them, Mind Spikes. Oh, yeah. Another Mind Blast. Another Mind Spike. Shadow Orbs are plenty. All good. All good. It basically makes all your spells instant cast. If you're up to about four mobs. Because of all the Mind Spike procs, your Mind Blast is going to be instant cast essentially all the time. Giving you free Devouring Plays, which are instant cast as well. So you, the only thing you should be casting when you're doing Mega AoE is Vampiric Touch. That's it! If you get more than four mobs, you're up to five mobs, you want to start using your Mind Seer. It's just going to be more effective. If you're up to about five plus mobs, start Mind Searing away. It really is the most effective way of DPSing at that point. Remember, you can Mind Seer off the tank. One thing I like to do sometimes when I do my five mans is if I look here at the Seer, I have a macro which is show the tooltip uh, tool Mind Seer. Slash cast, the target equals focus, Mind Seer. So I stick my tank on focus. So let's say this training dummy here, and let me mark him. Let me mark him so you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'll put a nice big circle on him. I'm going to focus up that dummy. One thing I always disliked about the idea of being able to mind sit off a player is that you, a lot of people target that player. Which means you lose track of things that you're doing elsewhere and I don't like that. So I would focus up the tank. And I would just be DPSing it. Oh crap, an AoE phase. I just press Mind Seer. It's doing it off the tank. You can see it's targeting him there. Although my mob is targeted here, I'm targeting this mob. Let me see, I'll show you with my Mind Flay. I'm targeting that mob. But when I Mind Seer, it switches to the tank, which would be there. And therefore, I can just keep target on my main focus. And all I have to do is press Mind Seer. I'm not going, oh, click the tank. Now I Mind Seer. All that kind of stuff. Don't like it. Don't like it whatsoever. I prefer just using that macro for my five mans. Or if I know one of my tanks in my raid is the guy who's tanking the AoE mobs, I'm just going to focus him up. Or maybe he's called uh, Billy. I would change this to target equals Billy or whatever your tank's called. And my Mind Seer will just feed off Billy or whatever it could do. Now, it's up to you how you do that or if you don't use it at all. It's entirely your decision. Entirely your decision. It's just something I particularly like. All right, ballers, let's jump into a five. And now let's see exactly how all this works together. You take it easy, ballers, and have a great day.